Minnesota Timberwolves go into Denver and grab a victory. Anthony Edwards, goodness gracious, uh, a franchise playoff record of 43 points. He's the second player with back-to-back -back 40 or more point games. At the age of 22 or younger, Obbs, Kobe is the other. Nas Reed, 14 of 16 of his points came in the fourth quarter. Jokic did have 32, eight, nine assists, seven turnovers, but we have to talk Anthony Edwards. At 22 years old, Chandler, who has been more impressive than him? I don't, I don't have the words for this kid. It's, it's <laughs> unbelievable, and I say it all the time, every time I talk about this team. He does it on both ends of the floor. It's ridiculous, the effort. Usually a kid that's 22 years old, a star offensive player with that much talent and that much game that he has, that's what he's focused on, that's right. what he does. A Luka Doncic, a Trey Young, these guys that come in, they're big scorers early. They don't care about defense. This kid does. He's active. He wants to guard the other team's best player. And then when you just look at his handles, the, his, his package on the offensive end is absolutely insane. He was huge down the stretch for them. Uh, he, he, it's, it's off the block post up and transition. He's smart. He's picking and choosing when to go, when to be aggressive, when to get his other teammates involved. And this was unbelievable. This was probably the most impressive win to me of all the playoffs so far, just yeah. because no one, I didn't expect this, Denver is this juggernaut, Denver, how do you do it? And this team goes in and gets a road a road win in game one. That's game impressive. One. And a lot of it had to do with Anthony Edwards, and it's just unbelievable he can go and drop 43 points <laughs> in Denver. Uh, it was special. It was a special, special performance. It's kind of ridiculous, Lou. I think we've been getting this all wrong, man. We're looking at the face of the league. Mm. We've been trying to figure it out. We've been throwing all of these different names around. It's Anthony Edwards. The way that he played against Denver in that game one, he put the world on notice. He's one of the, I, listen, I haven't felt like this since Derrick Rose when it comes to like a young guy coming out and making an impact this fast. Like we didn't understand, we didn't think that the Minnesota Timberwolves would be this competitive this fast. And we also didn't think Anthony Edwards would be playing at the level that he's playing as, as fast either. So to, to have both of those things happening at the same time is an exciting time to be a, a basketball fan. But I, I'm, I'm probably in a minority. I feel like they can sneak another game here in Denver how they played the first game. Mm. How about him, 22 years old, too, going up against his, like, mentor, yeah. KCP, role model, big reason he went to Georgia, and he said, listen, that's my big brother. I'm trying to rip his fucking head off. That's the like, thing. Like, that's he's the, the he, guy. He's a killer, man. It is unbelievable. We've been saying, we've been looking for that MJ Kobe assassin mentality. We got him. And he's right in front of us right now. Uh, Shams, that, look, I, we figured the series would be good. Uh, but to go in and get a game one victory is on a whole nother level. What would you see? I mean, obviously, Anthony Edwards being that guy, the, the face of the potential of, of the league, potentially. And what I love about him is he's he's relentless. Like he's going for everything. <laughs> he doesn't want to stop short of his goals. Like a, a few months ago or a couple months ago, we talked about Anthony Edwards being on team. We say like he didn't just want to be on the team. He wants to go and start. He wants to compete with Kevin Durant, LeBron James, Jason Tatum's, all these guys that have led this league and have been considered to be among the face of the league. He's coming for all of them. He wants to be that guy. And when I watch this series, I can't help but also think, this is really the Tim Connolly Bowl. He went and built the Nuggets. He drafted Nikola Jokic, Jamal Murray, Michael Porter Jr., hired Michael Malone. That was literally his team. Traded for Aaron Gordon, which made that team a true contender. And then now in Minnesota, he goes and trades for Rudy Gobert, Mike Conley, and he's really changed that entire culture, and he's built that Minnesota team exactly the way that, that you need to to beat Denver. Like, he legitimately went in and, and, and built that entire organization and figured out how do we beat the Denver Nuggets. I know this is the team to beat over the next several years, and I think he might have just done it, and, he, and we talked about it a, a while ago. He does have an opt-out in his contract. That's something that does hover around Anthony Edwards and Minnesota. Their president has an opt-out, and Detroit is really targeting Tim Connolly as well as John Horst in Milwaukee. But right now, Tim Connolly obviously has to be completely locked into this Anthony Edwards If show. he turns that franchise around, he'll get a statue. He's a deity at that point. Like, yeah, yeah right? Has there been it's a front office guy, Sean's, with a statue? Because <laughs> oh. Tim Connolly <laughs> might get it. That would be incredible. <laughs> it's coming. It is coming. Look, we all, I think most people, including all of the books, have the Nuggets going back to the finals and repeating. Um, and then you get a win like this for Minnesota, which is like, it's a moment, it's a head scratcher. Like, okay, does it do anything for you as far as the longevity of this series? 
Well, yeah, points. because now I think this is almost like the Boston Celtics Miami Heat series where they got punched in the mouth game two and they, it almost humbled them. Like, okay, we are beatable. We're, we're human, <laughs> and we can't just go through the motions against this Minnesota team. This is a team that defense travels. They've been the number one defense all year long, and with their length and their activity and the different looks they can give you, they present a lot of challenges, even to the Denver Nuggets, who are very, very, very good offensively. And they're not going to panic. Without Nas Reed going absolutely berserk in the fourth quarter here <laughs> and making a big play after big play, Mike Conley hitting a big three, Anthony Edwards doing what he did in those highlights. There was a collective effort, but the Nuggets were still right there with how well that the Minnesota Timberwolves played. It could have easily went the other way, if, especially Nas Reed. He got extremely hot. So I don't think there's any reason to panic, but I think, yeah, now they know, okay, this team is for real. This team isn't just like this surprise team with one good player. This, is, this, this team is loaded. This team defends. They gave Jokic a lot of different looks. Where seven turnovers, he can't do that. No. He cannot, he, he's got to be careful with the ball. He's got to get other guys. Where are these other guys? Uh, Porter had a good game, but besides that, no one at KCP, nothing. Jamal Murray, he's been struggling. We talked about Jamal Murray's game winners, yes, but outside of that, he's been shooting the ball very, very poorly all postseason. So I think there's definitely things the Nuggets can clean up, but this game, this series might go seven. It is, it I'm is, fine with that. Yeah, I hope it does. Chandler, shit just got real. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I say that because the Timberwolves have all the ingredients to be a problem for Denver, bro. They got size. They have superstar talent. They have wing defenders. They have a six man. They got veteran leadership. And they're fearless. They're not scared of Denver. They're there for the challenge. And like you said, the most important part, they have guys who want to sit down and play defense. They take pride in it. And when your superstar player is at the head of that and he wants to be the guy to take on Jamal Murray or whoever else is going to be hot on a Denver team, to be able to take them out of games and give you 43 on the other end, it's going to be a long series for the Denver Nuggets, bro. It is true because McDaniels can guard anybody. He's going to give Murray problems. And I love when they put Towns or Nas Reed on Jokic and let Rudy float because he really gave him trouble. Jokic is really good getting that ball right in the paint and throwing that 4-5 lob to Aaron Gordon. And a lot of times, Rudy Gobert was kind of playing that you know help side defense where he was deflecting, he was knocking away. You can't guard Jokic one-on-one. -on -one. He's going to have his way. Carl Anthony Towns also has to stay out of foul trouble. Bro, this guy does one. this every game. Yep. He's got to do that because he's too valuable on the offensive end. But Lou's right, man. This team, it's the way that they're set up. They are just a, they're, they're a bad matchup for Denver. So Denver's going to really have to make some adjustments. Yeah, the seedings in this one, it's almost like it was meant to be this way. Yeah, Jokic did have his 32, but the 11 of 25 shooting and those seven turnovers are big as well. Uh, here he is after the game talking about that Minnesota defense. To have a duplicate clone of myself <laughs> and then I can, you know, I can be uh, uh, fresh when they sub another guy, I, I'm going to be fresh. Seems like a good strategy to have for the rest of the series. Imagine like being his teammate it. and hearing that. Well, he know for I himself. Like I don't like it. I don't like it. It just sounds like the confidence is wavering a little it bit. Did. Not a lot, it's, but it just uh, sounds yeah. like he's, he's concerned. It sounds he's like concerned. he's trying to be cool, but he's really insecure at the same time, and it doesn't, I didn't yeah. love it. That makes him vulnerable. He's concerned. Yeah. It's the first time I've ever heard him make a statement like that. He's, he's concerned about the matchup problems that the Minnesota Timberwolves are, are, are creating for him. He's just tired is all. No, he wasn't saying he's going to have five of him out there. No, I know. I know. Like, I know. That would be rude. Yeah, that would not be nice. <laughs> that would not go very well. Um, yeah, like, is, is will they figure something out? By game yeah, two? again, I think he him taking 25 shots, I love that he's going to be aggressive, but he's got to take care of the ball more. The possessions are valuable, especially when the offense slows down in the playoffs, and we've seen that. There hasn't really been these 140, 150-point games. Everything is slower now. Everything is possession by possession. So, yeah, there's going to have to be guys like Justin Holliday knocking down shots. Peyton Watson's got to be valuable. Christian Brown, Reggie Jackson, these other guys that weren't very, very productive in this first game, they got to get more. We, for the most part, we know what we're getting from Jokic. Mm -hmm. We know what we're getting from Jamal Murray, although he's kind of been up and down with his shooting woes. But Michael Porter has honestly been their second best player. Like He's been unbelievable how consistent he's been. So they got to keep him going. But again, Minnesota puts them in a box with, the, with their matchups. And when you look at across the board, one through five, Minnesota kind of matches up perfectly oh, with man. them so and, and they're gonna have to sit down and guard them and on the flip side they don't have anybody to guard Carl Anthony Towns they don't have anybody to guard Anthony Edwards and then with these other guys with Mike Conley's and Jaden McDaniels and they're hitting shots this team is dangerous there's a reason why that their record was what the, what it was this year uh Jamal Murray as you mentioned he's had some 
huge moments. But he shot 40% from the field, 32% from three. The good news, though, is I think he's due for a game winner in game two. If we're going <laughs> yeah. by any sort of pattern. How do you get him to sort of be a little more consistent? Well, again, I think he's got to pick his spots. He's got to be more efficient. He can't just be settling for these long step back shots. It reminds me of Tatum sometimes in, in, in where he, he almost is forcing, shooting 31% from the field. Is, 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 is No, 40 from the field, yeah, 31 three. from three. That, that's not him. I feel like he's one of these players that we've almost put in this underrated, never been an all-star, but he's clutch and he's been great down the stretch. Very. But again, when you're dealing with their length and you're dealing with guys like Anthony Edwards, they're so much bigger and athletic and Jaden McDaniel's length. And then when you do get by him, you have the defensive player of the year and the paint. He's, he's just got to make better decisions. He's got to get easier looks. I'd love to see him get to the free throw line, get a couple early ones, get out in transition, force some, force some turnovers and get easy buckets. Because when he gets going and he's hot in the first quarter, he always has a big game. This game, I've never seen him have such a slow start. This bizarre. first half, it was, it was it was bizarre. A lot of that has to do with the uh, you know the Timberwolves defense, but he's just gotta he's gotta stay aggressive, but he's gotta make sure that he's getting good looks. Yeah, what do you tell him, Lou? I mean, we know he's not afraid to shoot. Like when he's had slumps, we've seen him continue to do it, and then a game winner. So what do you tell him if you're your teammate? Yeah, he just gotta continue to be aggressive, be himself, and just be assertive. But you know, it's tough. Jamal Murray kind of likes to play a comfortable basketball game. You know, he wants to come down, handle, come off of pick and rolls and shoot, play in the mid-range, some back doors every now and then. Minnesota Timberwolves are disruptive. They're picking you up full court. They're trapping. They're talking. And, and like Chandler said, once you get past all of that pressure from their elite guards and how they defend, you got to deal with the defensive player of the year when you get into the hole. And that's going to that's gonna be problematic for Jamal Murray, especially – with a strained calf, not being able to play comfortably, not being able to just do the things you want to do, having a team speeding you up, and you're not 100%, that's going to be an uphill battle for him in this series. Chandler has something to say. Who I got the Nuggets tonight. He's, okay, I, so he's I, they're, they're balancing good. it out. I like the money line. So I like the them five thing. and a half. I think they make adjustments. I think they're going to – I think it's it's – can you imagine them down 2 I just can't. I, that's the thing. I, is, I, think, I, I, I actually... I can't imagine them down 2 There's no way it's But Lou happen. said something before. He's like, he sees a world in which they, they could potentially go in. I don't know, man. Yeah. That was, that was Listen, a convincing win. The popular opinion would be to think that Denver's not going to lose two in a row on their home court to right. start the, the series. But again, if we're going to talk about the Minnesota Timberwolves for 10 straight minutes... Mm -hmm. I'm on the edge of my seat waiting for this game tonight because I think it's going to be that much exciting. It's going to be that exciting with all of the star power and everything that the Timberwolves are doing right now. I see a world in where they could go up 2-0 going home. I We're getting guess. very far ahead here, but what if what if the Timberwolves sweep the Nuggets? They what, might. Like, what, they what, could. What if that, Anything what, can. What, then are we talking about shopping Jamal Murray and Aaron? Yeah, like, tear it apart. The whole narrative on this juggernaut just not switches. Even, let's not even open that Pandora box. Oh, let's, my let's, God. Okay, you know what? But if we get a, if there's a, a Minnesota win tonight, Oh, then we're going. We are then opening up that box Phoenix. tomorrow, Lou. T-Wolves and four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's we're bringing happening. that kid to Minnesota. T-Wolves and oh, four, guys. Oh, God.